Had you ever heard anyone say, I don't understand why my life is like this? Why I have to suffer so much? Why when I pray, my prayers are not answered? Why is it that life is so hard? I've heard people say these things over and repeated times. Sometimes we need to stop and think that the choices we make in life, those choices bring along consequences. And we don't think of the consequences when we are making the choices. But when the consequences come along, we begin to ask ourselves, but why me? Listen, my brethren, I trust that you are enjoying a wonderful day in the Lord. And I trust that these devotions are encouraging your hearts. Ron Hamilton, he wrote the song, Dare to Stand. In the first answer, he said, Take your stand with the Son of God. Oh, be faithful to his name. Plant your feet on the word of God. It shall ever be the same. Dare to stand alone for Christ. Claim the blood he sacrificed. Lift the name of Jesus high. Press onward to the sky. Encouraging words to those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. I am sharing with you in these devotions in the morning and encouraging you along the way. I trust that the things that we are sharing with you morning by morning, that your hearts have been in courage. We're looking at what was the reason for the children of Israel going around and not reaching their desired place. We shared that God was desiring change in them. What needed to change? They needed to stop complaining, stop murmuring, stop asking for things that God was not willing to give them, and stop requesting to go back. But as I continue to read in Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 23 and 24, I noticed something, and this is what the scripture said, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto thy fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he hath another spirit with him. Notice carefully. Caleb had another spirit with him, and he followed me fully. He will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. What God wanted change in them. As I look at this, he said, Caleb had another spirit. They had a wrong spirit. They had a wrong spirit. Some time ago, I, I probably used it in the devotions too, of uh, the different ones in scripture with a wrong spirit produce a wrong attitude. And these folks, they had a wrong Spirit. Speaking of Caleb, as we go back to Numbers chapter 13, verse 30 to down verse 33, the Bible said, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are all able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. Wrong attitude, wrong spirit. Instead of trusting God, God said, go in through there, let's possess the land. They came back with a wrong report. 
the spies spoke negative of God's plan and arose the people. Negative of God's plan and arose the people. Sometimes God gives a plan and the leader to whom he gives the plan to many of the people under him, sometimes leaders also oppose the man of God. They oppose the plan of God and everything just stays right there and nothing gets done. God was desiring change in them. And that's the reason why they were not going. They were going around because they rebel against God's word. Now that's something that one must be careful with. When you go back to Deuteronomy chapter one, and verse number 26, the Bible says, Notwithstanding, ye would not go up but rebel against the commandment of the Lord your God. What did they do? They rebelled against God's word. That means that they were disobedient to God and to God's word. They were presumptuous. I want to read something for you from chapter 1, reading from verse number 41 down to both verse number 46 of Deuteronomy. Notice what it says. And he answered and said unto me, Ye have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God command us. And when he had gone on every man his weapon of war, he were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I speak unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelled in that mountain, came out against you and chased you as bees do and destroyed you in seer even unto Harmar. And he returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to you. So he abode in Kadesh many days according unto the days that ye abode there. Their presumption. When God told them to go, they came back and said, we cannot go. So they decided that they will not go. And then God just left them alone and they were going nowhere, getting nothing done. And Moses spoke to them. And when Moses spoke to them presumptuously, presumptuously they say they are going. And God told Moses, tell them, don't go. Tell them, don't go. Why? Because when I told them to go, I would have been with them. But now they are going, let them know they're going on their own. They are going without me. And let me be honest, watch, you cannot win any spiritual battles without the Lord. They wanted results their way and in their time. God wanted to lead them, but they would not commit themselves to following the Lord. Had you ever heard anyone said, I don't understand why my life is like this? Why I have to suffer so much? Why when I pray, my prayers are not answered? Why is it that life is so hard? I've heard people say these things over and repeated times. Sometimes we need to stop and think that the choices we make in life, those choices bring along consequences. And we don't think of the consequences when we are making the choices. But when the consequences come along, we begin to ask ourselves, but why me? Why this have to happen? And here it is, when they went up, watch, the Amorites, the Bible said, chase them like bees, because God told them not to go. They went on their own, not paying attention to God. So what was the reason for them going around this mountain? God wanted change. He wanted them to change from being complainers. They murmured against their leaders. 
They request to go back to Egypt. They wish they had died rather than to be there on their way to the promised land. They murmured against God. They tested God. They had a wrong spirit. They were going around because they rebelled against God. They wanted results their way and in their time. But God wanted to lead them. But they would not commit themselves to following the Lord. Wanted to enter the promised land, but don't want to commit themselves to following the Lord. If you were going around and around and around in life, you need to stop and ask yourself this question. But why am I going around and around and I cannot reach where my desire is for me to reach? Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word that we can go back to and check our own lives and see, dear God, what's in our life that needs to change. Would you have your way with us? Would you lead us? Would you guide us? Would you direct us? We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friend, please, would you click that button and share with a friend? I know that your friend will share with another friend. God bless you. You will be surprised to know because of you who on the other side of the globe would hear this devotion. Who knows? Translate it in their language and use it for the glory of God. You do have a great day.